Okay, we're live. Hello. This is Verde Arbusto, and this is the um, Schumann Resonance Harmonics group on Facebook and on YouTube. And this is a little un unusual video. Um, I have my friend Alex in the studio here with me, and this is take one. We'll see how this works out. Um, and um, uh, thank you all for being here. And um, by request, I'm trying to find a song to help heal a broken heart. Um, and the only way to heal a broken heart is through love. <laughs> and uh, quite honestly. And music. Getting up and dancing, moving around. Art. Yeah, art, being creative. Um, All right, so, now that we're live, there we go, that's our thumbnail. What are we looking at? Yeah. So, what are we looking at? All right, so this right here is the KP index. Oh, I just like it when I do that. <laughs> I bang the stand. I may cut that out of editing, but it'll take forever to, to, to get the two seconds out there. All right, so this is the KP index. Okay, We're, this is a session on what is the KP index. All right, so the first thing to understand is, is this is a magnetic index. It's a measurement of magnetics, the geomagnetics of the interaction of the planet with the sun. All right, so this is measured as a conglomerate uh, or a composite from around the world. All right. Now, the reason I have this as the thumbnail with this over here is because I like the graphic, quite honestly. And it's not, it's a bait and switch. It's not necessarily part of the lesson. In fact, it's, it's, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to uh, talk about it at all, um, actually. But it makes for a nice graphic. At any rate, so um, so you see, they give here a high latitude, and uh, there's an active ten, you know, minor twenty five percent severe. There's a warning. This is a probability forecast on these. What is it warning of us of? It's warning of. Uh, it's a well, a forecast of a certain time period of the next kind of, uh, you know, today. Or when it will happen. Yeah, exactly. So, the 50, you know, that's a notable thing because 50 percent, that's kind of where we're here at about the 50 percent mark right there. You know, the nine, it goes up to nine, okay. you know. Um, today, for the uh, the predicted maximum here, they have a, a, the KP at four, which is what the average is. So, right now, at this moment, here, it's at five. I'm fairly sure that, that that right from when I was taken this is you know the screenshot right here now right before I did this the video I mm -hmm. put that as a screenshot moments so that, ago yeah moments ago exactly so um, all right so we're go I'm and I'm let me say I'm learning about a bit of this myself and um, I would like it uh, kind of um, noted that uh, you know I, I've I've learned a bit in the process of putting this together. Um, you know, so all right. So as as I am following through with my due diligence, um, this right here is um, all right. So I want to talk about first. Let me bring up the Schumann. All right, here. So, this right here is the magnetics of the Schumann. The Schumann resonance. Okay. So, these are actual numbers here. And the different modes, the white, yellow, mm -hmm. the red, and the green. All right. So, I've done a, done a show on the modes and what... Uh, with there, there was the, the there was a visual aid of the different um, 
colors in their uh, um, their illustration from uh, I think it was Wikipedia of the different modes and how I I showed the color things with that. So this is an ongoing discussion of what the colors are here down at the bottom relative to the spectrogram on the top. All right. So the magnetics this here is the KP essentially this is what the KP measure measures is the magnetics but not at the same scale. All right. Oh so this right here is real import important. So this right here, nano, okay, it's highlighted, you can't even really see it here, to the uh, 3, 6, 9, to, to the negative 9, right? And then the next one up, pico, or down, pico, that's what these are here. So a thousand, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Then you have a fem femto. And I, I will be honest here, besides me being a freaking klutz, <laughs> this is freaking comedy turned into a comedy action show. Um, uh, so the, the Schumann resonances are measured between the Pico and the Femti scale, right? It's measured that low. These are the Schumann rel relative to the other one, this nano here, ding, 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 which is a billionth, a nano is a billionth, mm -hmm. the pico is a trillionth. So these Schumann resonances are in the trillionth to quadrillionth of a, a, a Tesla. Very, very small. Yeah, tiny. It's tiny, tiny, tiny. Relative to the KP index, Extremely. which is measured on the, the nano scale, which is in itself tiny. <laughs> However, by comparison. However, yeah, by comparison, it's a thousand times stronger than the, um, the Schumann resonances. Okay, now the other thing is of note the difference between the KP, the magnetics that we'll see. All right, so the magnetics that we'll see, that I'll show you, is... I'm skipping all over the place. Hopefully people are following along. All right, all right, so here, okay. So, this right here, this stack pot, plot, sorry, of, of your, your rope. It almost looks like a seismograph. It almost kind of does look like a seismograph. Uh, good point, Alex. Okay. Um, and And I will say this. There is a similar technology of you know, so. correlation between the, the one and the other because the seismo picks up earthquakes and there are generally you know uh, extremely low frequencies that are given out before earthquakes and so the Schumanns will pick up you know pre-earthquake dealios that happen on the earth you know because there's a resonant low low frequency uh, signal that, that gives out so that's part of what these also check out as well. So what we're talking about here, these are the nano scale here, right? These are the latitudes, and this is the station here. NAL, HYR, HEN. This is all from, uh, it says here, I shall read, my sticky pointy thing, Stack plot, your rope. This plot shows several magnetometers that are located in Norway, Denway, and Finland, ranked according to their latitude. When a geomagnetic disturbance starts, the northern magnetometers will respond, and as the disturbance strengthens, the lower magnetometers will respond as well. Once the stations Dombask, D-O-B, and Solund, S-O-L, react, 
there will be a chance for the European middle latitudes to see aurora low in the northern horizon. Now I'm going to show you way down here. SOL, that's the other one, and DOB, I think that's it. So this one here is the one station. In the, so that's what they were saying as their kind of spiel, that when it gets down here, this latitude, this way down, you know, then that's, you're going to see aurora affecting the... Like the aurora borealis? Yeah, yeah, aurora, that's exactly what they're talking about. Huh. Yeah, so that's one of the, the huh. things that you, you, you can tell, that when the KP index does, you know, some crazy thing, like that, when, when you see the KP is up like that... A good chance for an aurora borealis? Yeah, you'll expect to see an aurora uh, at the lower latitudes... You know, you know, even up to including where we are. That's crazy. That is crazy, but that's you know that's what the red is telling you. That's significant. There was a chance, but most likely didn't happen. Yeah, it dep you know, it depends. Depends. They could be spraying your 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 sky with mayonnaise and you know, you know, uh, uh, radioactive iodine or whatever. That is true. Boron or whatever. That is true. But I do love to look at the sky at night. Yeah, me too. Exactly. Cloudy or otherwise. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're at the 11 minute mark, um, and this is just a basic introduction. All right, so the KP index, what is that? So the magnetics of the, uh, the Schumann are this. Okay, we're keeping in track of what the Schumann is. Okay, there's the four, four modes, the four different size waves. And in practical speaking, okay, we're here up at the Schumann, quote unquote. The, sh the Schumann, okay, I do that in quotes on paper. So we have two components, as a reminder, we're, we're going to, uh, maybe not that high. So as a reminder, quick reminder, all right. So this right here, these upright spikes, these are the amplitude, right? You can see a mirrored yes. there to there, okay. So the amplitude is measured, that's the electric part that's measured upright mm -hmm. with a ball type antenna. Okay, so that propagates 90 degrees perpendicular to the surface of the plane of the, the Earth. Okay. Okay. Now the magnetics, what well, we're, we're going to work on as our strings of a uh, guitar, okay. right? So I give this analogy to the people. We talk about, you know, mm -hmm. making music and, you know, the strumming patterns mm -hmm of the uprights, okay, we're developing this as a theory, these there are strings of, of music, all right, so, um, oh, which one's this, on the guitar? Well, you flipped it the last time. Okay, uh, right, well, this low, is... The low E string. This is, all right, so this is our low E string resonance har harmonic string here, okay. All right, so that's what we're starting with. We're, we're going with the guitar as our, our um, modus of uh, musical instrument before we go on to the advanced banjo stuff. I have a, a viewer who was, was doing talking about stuff? doing the with the banjo. Okay. Like threw that out as sure. just, uh, you know, kind of a general thing. It's just like, oh my fucking God, yeah. And the other instruments are welcome. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. But first I have to kind of map it out on one thing I know the best, which would be relatively, you know, a guitar. Okay. Know, because you're helping me and you know the guitar better than that. <laughs> I wouldn't say I know it better. <laughs> but it's you're more used to it. it it's, we have one here at hand, yes, 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 yes. you know. I do play a lot. Yeah. I do like me to play a lot. Well, the banjo has a little small... Um, I would always like to try the banjo. Half half a length string or something? If there, was, if there was a banjo in here, I'd probably try to play it. Yeah, okay. So that would be the problem with that. It's like, oh, they're not all the same. I have you know. no idea how they work. Yeah, exactly. Neither do I. No, I don't know enough to but make that's it. That's why there's YouTube. Yeah. Well, I don't know enough to make it a practical thing. But, <laughs> but you know, anyway, I'm working with this by request. Sure, sure. I'm working with one of the um, uh, uh, the viewers. All right. All right. So this is the electric again. This is the electric portion of the program here. So these uprights, you can see they're white. There's uh, synchronous mode. All right. Ding, 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 and. This one here, this eyeball one here, there's no, it's just barely any of that. So it's probably, um, probably a frequency line that yeah. happens. It's a thing. All right. So anyway, so 
the magnetics are here, the, these um, parallel lines, these are the actual resonances, the Schumann resonances uh, of 7.83, that's 14.1-ish, that's 22-ish, that one there, 22-ish, that's 26-ish, and this is hertz, cycles per second, standing waves, okay, so they're stacked up, okay, like cordwood, or strings and guitar. You know, I'm trying to give, I tried to give analogy, all right, you know, like flapjacks, um, you know, uh, you see the spikes, sure enough, sure enough, you know, but those are the, the strumming patterns caused by the electrics, okay, so the electrics arrive, and this is the point that I was making um, here on the script, is that the electrics arrive before the magnetics of the KP index, magnetics moved quicker, I'm sorry, the, the electrics, the electrics, the amplitude, the amplitude moves quicker than the magnetics, which is the quality portion. Okay. So when you have a coronal outburst or something, you see that, you know, five on the KP index, that's the magne magnetometers, and it's not the uprights here. That's a different antenna. Okay. So... The magnetometers of the Schumann are recording these lines here in Pico Teslas. So normally they would be green, except you'll see where the oranges grab it, mm -hmm. right? It's sort of... Yeah, it leads... Uh, you can't really see it. Okay, that's not... All right, so here, it's like grabbing it, right? Because it's magnetics that are compounding the other magnetics. There's always this green, this green one here, that's the, what everyone calls a heartbeat of the planet. That's not what it is, but whatever. I won't dispute that, right? But So there's a few of them, and as more stuff is pummeling us from, from the sun... Uh, it, it just kind of stacks up here in the environment, and occasionally we, we may release it into our magnetic field, but it generally sticks around and around and around and around the planet. So, as, as the waves, you know, you, you get that strum that comes in from the KP. I showed you the five. It's at a five. The red, I you know, it's picking the red. Right, okay. So, so is the KP like a magnitude of the Schumann? It's all right. So these are P, this is Pico. That's Pico with right with this antenna. Right. So that's the magnetics. That's the magnetic induction coil yeah. that's picking up that you know the, the signal I just showed you from right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's an antenna. Now the magnetometer. I don't want to get too much into this because it's its whole other thing and it's really a Patreon thing really it's okay. advanced it's All advanced right. so but that's part of what the lesson is is what the magnetometer is um and it's a, it's basically i'll just read it real quick the magnetometer is a device that measures magnetism the direct strength and relative change of a magnetic field at a particular location the measurement of the mag mag magnetization of earth's material like a ferromagnet is an example. A compass is one such device, one that measures the direction of an ambient magnetic field, in this case, Earth's magnetic field. Right. Um, and then it goes into, oh, Gauss. That's who this guy was. The, uh, Carl Friedrich Gauss invented the first uh, magnetometer. Yeah, he's famous. You de-Gauss your, you know, the old type C CTR screen, if you remember that. There was a degauss button on it, and it just goes. I used to do that just to watch it degauss the thing. I was like, "Oh, that's way cool." I don't know what it's doing, what kind of radiation, you know, it's blasting me with, but it looks really cool. Like an old TV. What's that? Old TVs. Yeah, the CRT. Remember oh, yeah, those yeah, old, yeah, the old yeah, type yeah. monitor with the yeah, tube? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Heavy motherfuckers. Yeah, the heavy ones, exactly, with the glass or all glass, uh, and there was usually on the front there was a certain symbol, um, or it would say degauss. 
and you know, generally you wouldn't have to do it, but sometimes a picture would be a little funny or a little off. Mm-hmm. Well, that I remember and, for those TVs. I don't, I, I don't remember what, like, I, so like I came in a little bit late on the yeah. Like I just remember my grandma's house. But yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, it would clear out. Yeah. You know, it was like, I love giving the example so of. This a, is like the buildup you're talking about. Yeah, the magnetic buildup, exactly. You know, static, sort of hard to explain, but it's a, you know, magnetic buildup. It's kind of like bumping the static off the rock. Kind of yeah, thing. exactly, exactly. It's the same general principle that happens with the linemen out there doing those high power lines on the helicopter, is that they have to release, you know, a certain charge of that and then couple with it. Otherwise, you can get, you know, there. there's an arc. Okay. And so there's a buildup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's what, what that is. It's a buildup. Electricity and magnetism, yes, they do that. They yeah, exactly. And, you know, it's like electrons like together. Yeah, I like. I give the example of shaking an etch a sketch. You know, I've given the example of an etch a sketch before, and so I like that example of the. You know, that's kind of a formula like degaussing it. Right, so we're at twenty one minutes. All right. So in part two is the, the more of an explanation of the magnetometer, and in part two, I'm going to explain them more about what the decibel is because that's okay. what they're using the scale. Um, yeah, there really has to be. I knew there, there would be because it, it's, you know, you can't do a basic introduction of, oh, the KP index, which isn't a real thing. It's all log logarithmic computation well, over three hours. Well, we're not real things, but anyways. Oh, thank you, Mr. <laughs> uh, Sartre, for the, uh, <laughs> the philosophical interlude. No. <laughs> when it comes down to it. All right. So it is this set of... Um, data here that they use to comp- all of this to compute wherever they are in their KP index what what it is that you're looking at. And so these different countries here I'm looking at yeah, like alright, I'm not going to go into all of this, it's maybe a part three, I don't know, you know. alright, so and here's the one for North America I see. yeah, so they're measured in different places, and I don't know where the, you know, the missing data is, down for maintenance, whatever. You know, don't get you know, conspiratorial on us here. Oh, we will. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, here's one That's for Australia. The reptile. Or the two, you know, the three, I guess. They're making their whole prediction on three of them. You know, whatever. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for climate disturbance, by the way. Goes uh, 16. They're giving you a nice descent. Ba-ping, ba-ping. Who's ba-ping. that? That's a satellite, actually. Oh, okay. So, goes. It's uh, this pilot shows. Oh, this plot. I'm sorry. This plot shows the one minute average parallel component of the magnetic field in nano Teslas, measured by the primary goes GOES satellite. A daily variation is observed in these data because at geosynchronous orbit. The magnetic field is stronger on the day side of the Earth and weaker on the night side. If the data drops below zero when the satellite is on the day side, it may be due to a compression of the Earth's magnetopause into the geosynchronous orbit at boundaries. On the night side, the smaller field values indicate strong currents in the magnetotail. Good golly that are often associated with the stretching and subsequent release of energy in Earth's tail, which results in aurora on Earth. Right, so if you've ever seen an illustration of it, the magneto pause way, way up. I mean, it kind of gave me a good visual of how the Earth is traveling through space. I love one of them. It's it's, 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 um, like this ball, like traveling through this thing, and you can just imagine things in the front being compressed, and then the tail of it kind of around all this magnetic stuff. you got this little satellite measuring all that information. Let's see. This guy here. There we go. So that is... Yes, yeah, something like that. Right, exactly. Yeah. So it says way thing, way, 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 way out. Uh, way, way, way out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, however, I don't know how far it is. Before, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, right. So these are different angstroms of, of current picture of the sun. Uh-huh. How we're at right now. Mm. Okay. And you see at some of the, you know, the different wavelengths, you see the coronal hole better. I They're moving. 
Move in, yeah. yeah definitely. Oh, so this is like a live view? Yeah, current. It's, uh, of the sun? Yes. Just like pulsing out magnetic shit? Yeah, yeah, just like pulsing out magnetic shit, just as pretty <laughs> as you please. <laughs> Damn. Who, <who's... laughs> Hi, I'm just going to bombard you with where's. What is this one? This one looks... This click, one all the way the I right. think you can click on it, yeah, see if you can get a... Uh, you can just... Uh, there you go, bam. Yeah, that one. So this is just a different spectrum? I yeah, stop it's a uh, hundred and... It's giving you the 171 angstrom. That's what that number is down there. If I'm, I remember correctly. And this is UTC. It's, you know, that's the day. And the UTC is based off of Greenwich, England. Okay, so this is like the last day, what it looked yeah, like. Eight. Sped up in 15 seconds. Yeah, exactly. That's insane. Yeah, and you see little little tiny doohickeys that, you know, and then there we go yeah. back. Yeah, you see little there's clouds. De there's definitely like some sort of wave motion going on like across it. Yeah. Wages World, who watches this regularly, he's seen little things in there. And so, you know what? Hey, I this is a good thing not everyone gets a chance to come over here and see this. So it's a good thing to watch. I don't I don't post enough of this on my, you know, channel, mm -hmm. but you know, there's no reason not for me not to either. You know. And you can see some things developing way. over the limb. Yep. You know, they call this a limb here. Mm -hmm. So we have another one right here. Yeah, and you can see coronal holes really good therein and therein. Coronal holes. This and the, uh, this is the one ninety three angstrom apparently. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Little black thing down here. Yeah, that's changes. a coronal hole right there. Look the way it changes shapes. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. Little person waving their hands. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's going to be a bunny. Oh, it goes back. So this is the start of the day. It's mesmer mesmerizing. It's kind of creepy though. Kind of creepy. It doesn't give me the warm and fuzzies. It's sort of mesmerizing. I don't watch enough of this. I mean, if there's any use for YouTube, it would have to be to show you this. You know, you gotta look at something. Yeah, yeah, it's like a fire, <laughs> watching, yeah, you know, a fake yeah, fire or yeah. something. Like, oh, yeah, well, staring it's into a fire, there's nothing wrong with that. This is similar. Yeah, I don't know if it'll be as mesmerizing so, when it's, you know, on the, I, I the mean, video, but it the certainly is. Remember the TV, like, you know, the static screen? I used to stare at the static screen, like, for hours. Yeah. Trying to find messages. If you look at it long enough, maybe not hours, but a long time, but if you look at it long enough, you can, I mean, your mind will tell you. You'll make up something. Your mind likes to make shit up. I'm not that great at that. However, there are hey. things that I've seen that, like, yeah, it does take some imagination. But I'm I'm pretty skeptic on things. Um, and it's like, you know, let me, you know, let me give a good explanation of it. But there's things that are just beyond explanation. Yes. Tons of things. Well, and you know, some things are details. Even with the great, you know, machines and sensors, it's still, you have to watch it all the time. Really. What's this one? This one looks like there's a whole bunch of active on the outside. This is the 304 Angstrom. Right this there. Is, yeah, this, this is the fun one. You see all kinds of doohickeys out here. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 This one seems more like the classic image of it, of the sun. Okay. So the interesting thing to me, because this is a sphere and what we see are here on the horizon, like these things right here, yes. that's happening here out at us. But right, right, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. And and because we're looking right at it, it would be hard for us to see it exactly. Yeah, I, I, but it's so, like, but yeah. 
I wonder what's going on here. So this one doesn't have some monster of a corona hole, does it? No, but you can see a darker little mm. bit of an area kind of up there and a little bit of a thingy there. It's dark. You know, the darker area is there, but it's like, yeah, that's... Yeah, there's there's a dealio happening there. Did you look at all of them? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's the 193. That's yeah, right. That's the one where, the yeah, you see the yeah, whole... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Vote on your favorite. <laughs> Do I have to? In the, in the comments, they can... The viewers. Oh, okay, all right. What is your favorite color so far? Okay, all right, to my viewers. Yeah, okay, there you go. This is number one. All right, no, we gotta move on, move on. I think more with the lesson. Go ahead. All right. Take control of the mouse. All right. So, um, all right. So these are the basic tools here that they're showing us as well. These are pretty cool tools. What's the website? Yeah. This one here is kind of fun to look at yeah. as well. What is this? This is all right. See that blast come off the sun right there? Bam. Ah. Right. Ah. So. These are the planets. That's I the see, sun. I see. These That's are the, the planets. Within through space. Now it shows you right here, Earth. Yeah. Okay. Where's Earth? What color is Earth? Earth is the yellow. Is the yellow? I okay. see. Right. So. Yeah. Um, the square thing. That's a satellite or, mm -hmm. or, or diamond shape. It just blasted the satellite right there. Bam. Right. Osiris. That's that. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. So Mars is. I mean, well, that satellite is way out there, huh? You know, yeah. Is this the scale? Um, Mer Mercury, that's Mercury is orange, okay. and then Mars, red, uh, Venus is green, somewhere in here, I think that would be green, yeah, that's green, I guess. Then the, uh, square is Parker, I don't know, alright, so then you see, alright, so that's the top-down view, basically, and then you see that's Earth's orbit run flat. So instead of it going, you I know, gotcha. on, like a record, it's running, you know, straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that's an edge on view. Yeah. Oh, uh, Stereo A, that's it. That's Stereo A is that yeah, one right there. Yeah, yeah. Right. What's Stereo? Those are all like Earth, Mars, Mercury, Venus, Osiris, yeah. Rex, Parker, and, and Mars, yeah. And so Osiris is a satellite. These, those, those yeah. are the different satellites. So Rex Parker is the one that's going closer on the sun that dips behind it right there. Yeah. I and then it goes up. Yeah. And then that little... And then that's a cross section of Earth on its orbit. Yeah. Like that black and white thing is its orbit, right? Yeah. Ed, Ed John. Like yeah, you're yeah, yeah, at yeah, yeah, yeah. Like how you were, if you were to. Yeah. Or, or it's like a. Um, no, a, I know. A, like a lane divider like, in a pool. So the way I know the way we look at the sad, uh, 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 the way that I was taught the solar system, it's not really this plane. Where like the sun's here and then all the earth, like all the planets go like that. Yeah. So it's more of a, like a, a spiraling thing. Like, yeah, so exactly. we're really, when really, like when we say orbiting the sun, we're orbiting the sun behind it in some sort of a circle. Right. But it's really going. We're getting kind of further. dragged, sort we're of. dragged, yeah, in like right. the wake of it or yes. whatever it is. And that's what the gravity is and things right. like that. So, so you, that that's so like sort the middle of, picture is you think of the the solar system as how you kind of used to learn it. So if you're looking at it flat and then you kind of like just tilt it more horizontal, that's right. what that kind of looks like there. Yeah. And so that, so that's how the and then that's the radiation going over. Yeah. So while you are correct, the satellite trailing behind is tracking it that way with that telemetry. Yeah. So yes, you what you're saying is correct, but keep in mind this is the satellite that's viewing us, so it's. You know, that's why there's, you know, it's kind of flopping at the end, too. Remember yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah, kind yeah. of, you know, like got some, you know, wiggle yeah, room. You know, in there, so. there's, the yeah. instruments are not perfect. And this is edge on if we're going to get blasted from, you know, like a direct, I don't know how to put it. The flat, it that, almost that's, looks like we're about to get hit there. Yeah. And then it stops. Whatever. That's, maybe we, we got hit. <laughs> yeah. That's like what happened yesterday. Yeah, but zero, that's a line dead on. That's... Uh, 90 degrees this way and that's mm -hmm. 90 degrees that way so and these things are out here in the peripheral obviously and that's you know the middle that's that's earth and the satellite looking like it's getting hammered yeah. uh, all right 
Yeah, so these are all space tools. A lot of the other shows. What's the show. green and the blue and all those colors represent? This is the um, down here the scale, the relative scale that they're giving you of you know the yellow, greenish yellow is like fifteen to eighteen um, R squared, uh, and I'm not sure what these abbreviations are, but a centimeter to the negative third. All right, so that's it's just a measurement. Of yeah, it's a measurement of uh, some kind of uh, where it, strength. Yeah, or, yeah. Or, so or, like where it gets where it gets black. Yeah, I don't. I'm not. I That's, think that may be the uh, uh, the density scale. I would. Li I'd like to say that. I'm not sure if it actually is. Well, like, but like, I think that's that, like that a thing density. Getting blasted right there. You yeah. Like a, right. You can see it's black around that, and it kind of moves all that stuff around. Right. So, yeah. So you see the lower the gr the blue the dark blue th that's yeah. not very high, but then as you start getting into like the the uh, red color beyond the yellow orange into red like mm -hmm. a, as a kind of. Yeah. comes out there. And it compresses it, right? Yeah, exactly. There's a compression. Yeah, yeah. there's a black around it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Kind of a rebound. All right. Okay, so... Um, there's that. So, um, this is another one where people show the KP index they show this. So that's another thing that we're looking at here. And they give you, on this little side here, KP greater than 4, you, it gets red. You know, the, 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 the orange zone or the, you know, the yellow zone is up to 4. And that's a, again, that's a logarithmic. And we're going to get into that in a little bit. I'm going to read a little bit what that article says. But this is um, proton flux. Uh, electron flux. Flux is movement. So it's it's what what it's measuring is the, you know waves that are coming in, and you know you get these kind of big dips. It's like you know like a sh shotgun, I think. You know, uh, trying to get the best analogy. Yeah. Uh, dip in yeah, of the electron flux. Electron is the the amplitude. So right, so electron volts basically, but so um, now the amplitude is how many times it goes up and up and down within a certain time frame, right? Yeah, generally, and it's showing you here mega electrovolts. All right, so GO sixteen primary is greater than yeah, greater than it's greater than two mega electron volts. All right, so that's what that's measuring. Then it says Geo's electron flux. It shows a high energy electron bombardment. The radiation storm levels occur when the red blue curves cross the dotted hashed line. Each factor of the 10, next line up, represents a higher level of radiation storm. All right, so it right. Wasn't so bad. Yeah, so they're giving you this alert, is here 10 to the third. This is peaking at 10 to the second, which is 100, basically. 10 to the first is... I hope you get the point. Yeah, yeah it's 10. Yeah. I need a, a mathematician here to help me with this. Yeah. All right, so that's what that's you see that is. All right. All right, so there's a lot of fun graphs here. It's just fun, of fun. Yeah, graphs. tons of fun graphs. Great pictures. Especially if you love fun graphs. Right, exactly. It, there's just stuff here to look at and you just fun. Away for hours. <laughs> right, and I'm, I'm kind of zipping through this because I, uh, I need to get back to the lesson. All right. And, and a lot of this I have really have no idea what it's um, telling me. All right, so in the meantime, all right, so back to the lesson. All right, so back to the words. All right. So we're at 39 minutes. I'm probably just going to stitch the two videos together, you know, or something. So. But it's a part A, part B, whatever. There's going to be some editing, maybe. Yeah, I have now that I have um, uh, Adobe Premiere Plus. 
should go quicker. Yeah. It, it, it the um, the rendering time. This is a speedy little computer for two two hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah, pretty know. good. Yeah, overall I did well. I happen to have it was the money from the stimulus. Mm. And uh, stimulus check in what's that? I didn't get my stimulus check. Oh, that's a bummer. I dislike when that happens. <laughs> you are a soldier. I am very close to living with almost zero money. Yeah, me too. Working for this job, I it, it puts a roof <laughs> puts a roof over my head, and I'm grateful for yeah, that. No, um, you know, the rest over that. All right. Okay. So, um, the 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 whole message here was, you know, what is the KP index, and that's what this lesson is. Finally, here in 40 minutes, we're getting into what the KP index is. All right, so um, I'm going to read here what it says. Uh, the KP index is the Global Electromagnetic Activity Index that is based on three-hour measurements from ground-based magnetometers around the world. Each station is calibrated according to its latitude and represents a certain K index, depending on the geomagnetic activity measured at the location of the magnetometer. The, excuse me. The K index itself is a three-hour long quasi-logarithmic local index of the geomagnetic activity at the given location and time compared to a calm day curve. The geomagnetic... The, I'm sorry, the magnetometer measures the maximum deviation of the horizontal component of the magnetic field at its location and reports this. The global KP index is then determined with an algorithm that puts the reported K values of every station together. The KP index ranges from 0 to 9, where a value of zero means that there is very little geomagnetic activity, and a value of nine means extreme geomagnetic storming. Got it. All right. Let me take a breath. Okay. Yeah. Do you want me to sum that up in like a sentence? Yeah. Um, so basically, you got all these things that are measuring the the change in the magnets. As compared to the average of a, on a, on a calm day, so they have this number that's in what they consider the average of a calm day. Yeah. And all these stations are picking up what is that difference between that calm day that they're picking up right now, and yes. then they take all that information and put it in an algorithm that sums up and says, was it was there a high variation based on these measurements uh, from all these different stations at that time. And so the, when it gets to nine, that's obviously very high. Very so, like if it's if it's low, so if there's no activity, basically, if it was basically a calm day. You'd be looking at zero all the time. Yes. Right. Or I don't know a five. I don't know about that scale. So I don't know if their scale it works that way. I don't know how that. Maybe that's what we read in the next paragraph. Yeah. Well, a lot of times we see three. three. You know, like okay. that's a, a common enough thing. There's you know generally something going on. Because they, you know, it's measured from a lot of stations. I, I guess my question would be, and this, and this is just a mathematical question, but like, <coughs> excuse me, what else? Um, how they would come up with the average of a calm day is it based off of these same measurements, what they considered a calm day? So, like, is it like at some point it feeds the information it's giving affects the information it's receiving? Yeah. Do you know what I'm but, Yes. Um, but I'm sure they have that figured out somewhere. Yeah, they have to... Well, that you, you, they, you need to have a logical starting point. You need to have a place to yeah. begin. But just so understanding what that logical starting point is makes all the difference in the world. As long as you can understand what that is, then you're kind of looking at... What, now you're seeing what you're seeing, right? Right. So... Because then... Because I think the way these all these things look, they're all, they're all like portals, right? Right. Like So, like, on this one... If you would see a higher than normal activity, you'd want to look and see what happened that day. 
Yes. And then, you know, and then compare that to other days with higher activity. Um, and under, in understanding the other maps you're looking at are, you know, also based off of readings from different areas. So, that's a lot of stuff here. Right. All right. So that's a good way to explain that. Thank you, Alex. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, it's a it, it, it's as right as anyone else could, it, it, better than anyone could really explain it, because the thing is, it's like part of the part of the distinguishing of, you know, what it means to the human, for example, here. Yeah, yes, yes. Is that you know with the 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 induction coil, the magnetic induction coil for the Schumann, it's register an actual number, whereas this is it's a computational, you know, algorithm yeah. uh, of one to nine, a relative... It's a made-up scale, an index. Yeah, it's a... Uh, it's a way to measure, it's a way to measure variation, basically what it is, but on a very, very, very broad scale. Yeah, a way to measure variation on a very, very broad scale, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So. Yeah, that's why actually you're perfect for this because you you've dealt with statistics and you've dealt with, uh, you know, like mathematical models and. You I know. do love me some programming. Yeah, you you do. Yeah. Like SQL, I like SQL stuff. Yeah, S SQL is a thing that people will pay you to know. Yeah, yeah. usually, yeah. Well, then now you get compensated fairly. Whatever. Whatever. Exactly. Oh, that's what I get. Just, I get rewarded for. Just don't for that. bother me. I'll do whatever you want. Just don't. Bother me. Yeah. <laughs> right. Stop looking yeah. over my shoulder. Yeah. I'll figure it out. Leave you don't know any better. Alone. That's why you paid me to do it. Exactly. What kind of man clown manager are you? Don't don't tell me what. Don't ask me why I can't do that. Something that you want. <laughs> yeah. Really, just trust my opinion that it's not physically possible. <laughs> There was one... You have no idea how to program. You think you could do that? You do it. All right. So there was one I saw. I forget where I saw this. Um, it was on the internet somewhere. And uh, there, was a cl there was the engineer was, was on the phone. He was answering phones. It was a small company. Sure. And so, you know, a client called up and he kept telling, you know, I want, the, you know, this and that. I want the machine to do this and that. And the guy kept saying to him, well, you know, it, it, it can't do that, but perhaps you consider doing it this way or that way. He's like, no, I want what I want. And then so the guy says, who made you the expert? And then he says, sir, when you look at the patent for this machine, under inventor, you will see my name. <laughs> You know, I, I am the, the, the guy who made me the, you know, who is the expert, the expert. you know. Yeah. So he's appreciated that. Um. All right, so uh, so basically, we're looking at it's a, a three-hour segment, it's a three-hour sample yes. of these bars here that you're seeing. All right. Yes. So, and they're using words like you know estimated, the uh, uh, forecasting, okay, um, yep. p probability. So okay. In, in this section, looks like there was a big, huge chunk of stuff. Happened. Yeah, because we're talking about you know I had zipped ahead and showed the number of different you know um, uh, the using like that type of a data stack plot yeah. data to compile you know this jammy jam here. Yeah, and then as you go down, all the locations. Which mm -hmm. I think it tells you the locations. In the yeah, exactly. It does. If you know what the codes of all those stations are, they just gave you soul of whatever B or whatever D O D whatever. Mm -hmm. So they they gave us those two stations, so I, you could follow all the way down. Like, oh, okay, yeah, it's, you know, each station has unique code, which is great. Sure. Um, somewhere that's a list, but it's like, oh, good going. Right yeah. Go. Anyway, yes. All right. So the estimated three-hour planetary KP index. Uh, derived at the NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center using minute-by-minute minute data from a number of ground-based magnetometers that relay data in real, oh, near, near real time. These observatories are located in the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, Germany, and Australia. The estimated three-hour planetary KP index gives us a quick indication of the strongest observed geomagnetic activity over a three-hour period. These periods are 000 to 300 UTC 
and then 0300 to 0600 UTC, etc. The maximum positive and negative derivations, oh, I'm sorry, deviations during the three hour period are added together to determine the total maximum fluctuation. These maximum deviations may occur any time during the three hour period. During periods with high geomagnetic activity, the NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center will send out alerts based on this near real time real time, minute by minute data, as soon as a certain alert threshold, KP4 or higher, has been reached. The area below shows a plot of the estimated three-hour planetary KP index from October 2003, with three days of intense geomagnetic storming. And I guess I'm like, where was I when all this shit was happening? This was October 2003, and that's like a nine. Look at that, hitting a nine, a nine, a nine, a nine. But it's like, all right, that's a Boulder, Colorado. They're a mile above us. Like, okay. No, 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 no. That's the average of everybody. And so basically, I think down here. Mm. Right, but I think that was just a report from that particular station, and that's nope. not. I, no, no, no. That's where they. That's where they compile the data. Let's see, uh, right here, KP. That's and decibels. Scale. That's why I got decibels up this yeah. one. Where's they have this one? Right, so North America, right, they're showing you here. These are where all the observatories are. Yeah, exactly. I so I, w I would consider, like, all of that, you know, Colorado, like, all of North America. Like, all right. But it's like, well, I'm still saying, though, I mean, it's kind of way out there. Like, where the fuck, what was happening in 2003? I don't remember some crazy shit happening here. You know, like... I mean, that's the point of making it. I, I don't remember a crazy snowstorm or whatever. I was just thinking about this the other day. I don't know. 2003? I? I don't know. Let's find out. Yeah. How do you open up a new sheet? Google the date. Oh, no, no. I don't want to do that. <laughs> this is just a lesson for the... Um, we'll have to do that some other time. I'm going to do it right now. Oh, okay. Good. All right. Good. All right. So, um, all right. So, now look at this. All right. So, the KP is now... What time of the day was it? Down to three... Well, it would be, like, over the course of a couple of days, actually. No, no, that's, that whole thing was over a three-hour period. No, see, look, it's showing you the 29th, and then it's... Each one of these bands is th a three-hour period. Oh, each one of those bands right. is yeah, exactly. Period. So that that oh, happened okay, in that so three-hour period, three, right. Through a three-day so, period. Exactly, exactly. So you see the 29th, the 30th, the 31st, November 1st, right there. So that's over the course of a four days there. <sighs> All right. 2003? Yeah, 2003. All right. So, um... All right. We're getting close to... The inmates have taken over the asylum. It's like, all right, there's way more to the KP index, but it's like, oh my god, it's logarithmic, it's logarithmic, it's statistical, it's analytical, it's mathematical. There's lots of formulas to it. I, you know, I really have lost interest in the KP index itself. Um, but I wanted to show the fun graphs. You know, this is what they're basing their their information on, right? And so we're still figuring this out together. All right, so North America, where are we? This plot here, this plot shows several magnetometers that are located in North America, ranked according to their latitude, mm -hmm. when 
a geomagnetic disturbance starts, the most northern magnetometers will respond, and as the disturbance strengthens, the lower magnetometers will respond as well. Uh -huh. uh. So what would be interesting is to compare that actually to the KP index, because that is that is like the report of from the KP index. Right. So this right here is North America. This is the closest mm. that that is ours. I see. So S I T I don't know where any of these cities are, just by these names. Uh, B O U Boulder maybe. Alright, so that's D E D. This is B R U C M O. S I T. These are city names. The latitudes are here. If you can figure that out, zero latitude. Oh well, that's actually no. That's actually that's not a zero latitude. That that's like a dead. Um, that that's a lack of data. That's not zero latitude. Oh, that's how much data they got. Yeah, that's that's there there. That's offline. Oh, offline, gotcha. Yeah. So we are missing data, and I'm sure it's not intentional. I'm sure it's like you know they're just running out of funding. Yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. So this, I mean, I wonder what that, I wonder what that graph looked like in on October thirty first. Okay. I don't know, but can, I, can we look at the KP index? I do day? know right now. This is current for right now. All right. So this yeah, yeah. is the twenty fifth of September. So they may have one where you go back in time. I think. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Question for Google. The first last one didn't bring up anything. Did it? Google. Go, go, go. You know, it's a starting point. I don't know how long that line was there, but I just noticed it. I'm feeling much happier about that. I'm going to have to put this off as another test. <laughs> Write it off as a, a Yay, system yeah. check. Um, anyway, all right. So, um, all right. Today's KP3. Tomorrow, KP4. Yeah, the prediction is the KP for tomorrow. All right. So, um, yeah, it's down to down in the the green. All right. Um, so they also, while we're just kind of snooping around here at the tools and whatever, just introducing. And this is really an introduction to the tools and some of these mm -hmm. fun graphics they have. That's what makes this a great video. Is it like you know a lot of graphics? You can install the app on your phone. All right. So this is the solar wind. Um, speed, current speed of 481.9 kilometers a second. That's fast. Not as fast as it can be. <laughs> well, 481 kilometers per second? Yeah. Is, well, 481 kilometers is like 300 miles, right? It's like 300 miles, yeah. Per second. Probably, yeah. That's fast. Okay, yeah. Not compared to the speed of light, I suppose. Right, correct, yeah. But it is relatively fast. It's got some pack behind it. It does. Yeah. And this one right here is closer to what we were talking about. It's the BT index, the Interplanetary Magnetic Field, the BT, which is 7.1 nanoteslas. Nanoteslas. What's a, what's a Tesla? A Tesla. That's a great question. What? Um, would you like to care to look that up, Alex? A new device. Uh... Because, uh, oh, actually, Tesla? Yeah. but if I type in Tesla, it's going to give me like Tesla. The car. Yeah. All right. So Tesla unit. Yep. Tesla. Exactly. Unit. All right. So it says. You know, the definition is just giving me, what's a Weber? A, a Weber is the unit that the Tesla is based on. Tesla is magnetic flux, but it's a Weber that it's you really... Derived unit mag of magnet flux. A flux oh, yeah. density of one Weber over the meter squared is one Tesla. A flux density. What is a flux density? Flux, flux. All right, so it says the symbol, the Tesla symbol, T, is a derived unit of the magnetic induction, also magnetic flux, density, 
in the international system of units. One Tesla is equal to one Weber per square meter. The unit was announced by the General Conference on Weights and Measures in 1960 and was named in honor of Nikola Tesla. They finally honored him in honor of something. Right. So, physics, um, in physics, the Weber is an SI derived unit of magnetic flux, a flux density of one Weber per meter squared is one Tesla. Oh, no, screw you. I hate it when yeah. I do that. So, from what? So, what you have to look at is relative... Um, okay, I think I know what it means. So, basically, you got these magnetic fields, right? And if you look at magnetic fields... They're all, like, if we look at a simple one, like the circles, right? Yes. So all of this stuff is assuming an average of a magnetic field. Yes. And what all most of this stuff is measuring is the variation of that average of what, I guess, we would expect of a magnetic field. Caused right. by some sort of disturbance, which we may or may not know what that is. Right. So a Weber, no, the magnetic flux is the amount so like if you look at the magnetic field in terms of lines right yeah so the weather <clears throat> the, the, the flux is the amount of those lines going through a described space so like if you have a lot of lines going in there you know that's that's the flux in but if you have so that's what's go like that's what what they describe now the 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 weather is the amount of variation of those lines <laughs> And how many of those lines are going through that area? So, like, that's what that measurement is. Right. Yeah, Does I think that that's sense? a great way to describe that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, we'll leave it open to the uh, the viewers, if that makes sense to you. If you yeah, heard, you heard Alex, you know, he, maybe it didn't come across. We'll have to see if this comes across, you know. Same thing with me, but I'm talking right at the, the yeah. camera, so well, I know I'm, I'm know, being heard. I'm, anyway. I'm, I'm so, anyway. So, yeah, good. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, um, uh, assuming that, uh, um, you, you, uh, leave comments if you understood that. If you didn't understand that, um, you know, I, I want to hear what you have to say. Um, we're going to uh, look at examples of the relative strengths of what, uh, what te the Tesla and Weber scale is. All right. So, um, and this shows here the, um, the example is from the main article, Orders of Magnitude of Magnetic Field. All right. So the following example is, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a screenshot of this and post it as a picture. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Um, all right. So we have um, he, he, here, we have 3.2 times 10 to the negative fifth Tesla, which is a... a Micro, I think that's a micro Tesla, the upside down U thingy there. Yeah. Three thirty one point eight six nine um, uh, UT Teslas. I'm pretty sure it's a micro. Anyway. It's a mu. Yeah, because I got yeah, that's a mu. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, that's just that's just a describing like so like you could visualize on that scale. 3.2 Teslas. Right. So, like, that's what... I think that's how... It, so, I think the math in that... Well, the the Tesla like, starts, like, right here. one of the solar sun. 1.25 Tesla, which is the magnetic flux density at the surface of a neodymium magnet. All right. So, ah. the rest of these are portions. So you like can measure point, this stuff out here. Right, yeah. A neodymium magnet. I need to get myself one of those. Point three Tesla is the strength of a solar sunspot. Okay. All right, so this is the range below ah. one full Tesla is where we start talking about here with... So these have, these are very low, 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 magnetic frequencies. Oh, wrong one, sorry. But what is the, what are we, for what is the point? So, all right, so micro. Micro. Here we go, that's our symbol. In milli, M is a milli, this mu is micro. There we go. Yeah. Which is the micro is one, is two, three, four, five zeros, and then a one, which is negative six. So the micro is negative six. 
that's the or the strength of Earth's magnetic field at zero latitude, zero longitude. So then you start having here um, the Milla Tesla, which is the negative three. Yeah. The strength of a typical refrigerator magnet, then 0. 0.3 Tesla, the strength of the average, I guess, solar sunspot, then the magnetic 1.25, one and a quarter Tesla, magnetic flux density at the surface of a neodymium magnet. Then you have one Tesla to 2.4 Tesla, the coil gap of a typical loudspeaker magnet, you know, and then you have... So there's more... No, the coil gap of a typical loudspeaker magnet has more than on the surface of a new diminium magnet? Yeah. Yeah, typical. Oh, it's just 1.2. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. yeah, sure. Sounds great. So I'm not going to go through all of these uh, exactly, but we're talking about way down here. You know, these are gigateslas, the magnetic strength range of a magnetar neutron star, and there's yeah. a white dwarf and all this shit down here. Right? Magnetic, pro like that's the, the, it's the sun and shit. Yeah, exactly. Even more, though. the neutron star is bigger than the sun. All right. So with all of that, okay. Okay, so the script I had wrote, had written, after all of that, I gave the introduction, and that was all the, um, uh, this is the article here, then there's, there's more to it, but I'm not going to really get into what it is, we, we've introduced it enough to, with a finalized KP, it's logarithmic, this is mathematical, all right, so, going to read what I wrote here, I'll turn the love down, all right, so, I wrote the K index indice measures a composite of geomagnetic activity based on computational analysis. Zero is fair weather, nothing happening, where nine is extreme weather. This measurement is magnetics only in a composite over a geographical area. Schumann magnetometers are given in actual number values in picoteslas. KP index measures nanoteslas. And we showed the diagram there. One of the pictures is the SI, SI illustration, which I showed you. Okay, it shows different size. As you can see in the illustration, the relative difference between the two scales, the Schumann magnetometers are set too sensitively to be picking up the same signals as the Earth's geomagnetic field connection with the sun. There's an initial push that we see in the high K days, like where it starts getting into the red, which causes the twang of the strings, the magnetic strings of the standard normal resonances in their usual state, which is generally the green mode. So the normal Schumann resonances would be just normally green. But when you see the orange and the the mid grade, the rust color, okay. that's where it's grabbed it. The KP is showing it because that's magnetics. It. It's not affecting you in the um, the vertical column, which is the electrics. All right, so there's the initial push we see in high K days, which causes the twang of the strings, the magnetic strings of the standard normal resonances in the usual state, which is generally the green mode band. So that's, the green mode is four. It's once we see the mid-grade magnetics of the orange, rust, maroon colors that we notice something from the KP side of the magnetic field. Schumann resonances are measuring the skipping along over time, which is essentially the stacking up like pancakes or flapjacks, or cordwood as I've called it before. I'm making references to musical instruments because I think an electric, I mean, sorry, an acoustic guitar, a lute, a banjo, is the most universal illustration I can give. Mid-grade refers to the two modes of the yellow, which is the two, and the red, which is three. These are our colors to work with, but applied into action, we get rust, orange, coral, maroon, as we dip into mode four, the green. So red and green give us that kind of maroon color. Often, high KP days, 
have an electrical component which has arrived earlier by the phi angle. This is how they're related. So the phi angle is giving you, oh, I forget where that was, but the phi angle is giving you like a heads up that there's a magnetic thingy mabobber mm -hmm. coming behind it. And depending on how far out you are to that angle is how badly you'll be whacked by what's coming in. I guess that's the best way to put it. Um, so the initial strum, or the clanging of a hypothetical bell, which Mr. Schumann, Professor Schumann, talked about himself, is the electric, so the amplitude. In, uh, then a short time later, the KP magnetometers kick into action and give you that index. All right, so after the electrics have arrived, then we start feeling the magnetics, and that's where all those, you see that the mountain look like a mountain range of that stuff coming in to the station. All right, that's basically the best way to put it. All right. Yet, on the Schumann side, which is the, the Pico, um, the tiny, you know, uh, um, the tiny scale of the Pico electron volts and the Pico Teslas, not the nano Teslas of the other, the, the stack pot plot. Right. So, um, the Schumann side, we feel the amplitude and the resultant high grade electrics, which grabs the KP index strings of our hypothetical musical instrument analogy. Then, successively, the KP magnetics kick in into a strum of the magnetic strings, which were already resonating. They're always there. And those magnetic strings are the resonant frequencies of 7.83, 14.1, 22-ish, 27-ish, 33-ish. So those are the always running strings of the, the, uh, the Schumann resonances that are generally in the green. So when you start seeing those waves that are that are in an orange and a rust color, that you start saying, well, those are KP days. Gotcha. If it's not a cross section of the the amplitude, the upright, where that it's there, you can see, you know, you can kind of see it. If you know what you're looking for, this is what I'm trying to ex express to people, so they know what they're looking for when they look at the, the Schumann, how it's related, and how all and why. Um, so, hypothetical musical instrument analogy. Then, successively, the KP magnetics kick in and strum the magnetic strings, which are already resonating and vibrating from the electrics, which arrived earlier. And what it's like is like a line amplifier magnifying, amplifying what's already there. So, that's generally as basic as I can make the interaction between the KP magnetic index so if there was and the, the Schumann. So then, like, with the with an analogy of, like, say you strum a, hit a string and then you have, like, a whammy bar? Yeah, that may be a good way to put it. Yeah, like a whammy bar. Which is a, um, I'm trying to think of the, another name they call that. Wawa. Yeah, Wawa, you know, um, there's another name, more technical name, I think they call it. And anyway, anyway, I think anyone that plays guitar, an electric <laughs> guitar, know knows know what, it. yeah, yeah would know what a whammy bar is. I think even the banjo lady... Uh, uh, my I think viewer. everybody knows what a whammy bar is. Not no everyone. whammy, no whammy, no. Wait, that's something different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway. All right. So I think this is a good part one introduction without getting too far into. That's the the, the script, and I have wanted to make sure to include this because I put it out there for a lot of people on Are the. Are we on part one um, still? Yeah. Part it's um we're at one hour and thirteen minutes, so I think we're actually it's thirty three minute yeah. intervals. You got some, you got some in there. Yeah, yeah, I definitely have enough for a few videos anyway. If I want to go go down that route. No, but you got to look at it. You got to look at see what you want to produce out there. Is this something worth watching? All right. Um. Because if oh, you don't want to yes, watch it again. <laughs> I do. I watch them again. <coughs> and not, not critically. All right. So this is where we would go to the next um, magnetometer. I want to go outside, my friend. Can you take us outside? No. But we can end for the, um, the day because this, is, um, this would be where I'm going to go next.
So, all right. So, um, ah, 1444. All right. So, um, I think we're done with part one. I'm going to have to stitch this together. I don't know. This will be a few parts, whatever. We'll see what we're going to do. But, um, yeah, we're, we're, definitely, uh, we're definitely done for uh, this session here. Um, and so, uh, I'd like to thank my friend Alex for stopping by and um, hopefully directing this in a way that we all can kind of understand what's going on with, you know, a rather complicated kind of topic. Yeah, yeah I have no idea. I'm just fumbling through as well. Yeah, there's the, he's the statistician and mathematician trying to figure this out yeah. going along too. Exactly. So, um, I guess fortunately for me, I've done the most research, so I'm ahead of, ahead of the you, class. You know, yeah, you know what it's supposed to be. I'm just yeah. looking at numbers and data, and all I see right now is that there's numbers and data out there that do things, and there's a reason why they're tracking them. Yeah, 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 yeah there is a reason. Yeah. Which is the magnetic field, which I'm sure that ties into many things on Earth. Right. Um, okay, so um, I think that is. Um, all right. I think that's it for today, and um, uh, thank you all for being here. And I appreciate everyone. Please leave comments, uh, suggestions. Um, questions. I'd like to know people's opinion and feedback on what's going on. Um, uh, tell your friends, like, share, you know, ask your friends to subscribe because this dude's really cool and he's got something interesting to talk about. And I have a great voice and I have good music. So we're going to ask DJ Aaron to take us out. <laughs>